it's Sweet 16 time. The tournament is getting ready to start today. So we're going to release this special Sweet 16 episode with our man Jared Peck previewing you, getting you ready for the tournament. We got our guy, Jared Peck from Herald Leader Sports. Here's that interview. Jared, man, you know this week we got the boys Sweet 16 going to bring you on because you covering everybody. Get a little preview of the Sweet 16 before we get started. Oh, well, uh, 16 teams uh, going to be doing it over four days because the semifinals and finals are all on Saturday now, like, just like the old times, uh, going <laughs> back to that because Easter's on Sunday. Uh, but uh, looking forward to a great bunch of games. Got some surprises here in Lexington this week. And, uh, you know, we started off with, I think, Elizabethtown and uh, who is it, not – not County Central on 11 a.m. Uh, Wednesday. I'll be there all day Wednesday, all day Thursday, all day Friday, all day Saturday. Uh, looking forward to it. All right, Jerry, <laughs> to go back to go back a few weeks. Uh, Dunbar beat Catholic, the Catholic losing in the in the in the regionals. How big was that for Catholic? And, and was it was it part of the biggest upset all year to have them go out early? Yeah, I would say that most people had, had penciled in Lexington Catholic as the winner of the 11th region, unless you were uh, Dunbar, Douglas, and Madison Central. Uh, <laughs> you know, most people thought it would be Lexington Catholic because of uh, Ben Johnson and, and the size that they had. Uh, you know, it turned out, you know, Dunbar was a really good team. They still are a really good team. They have no seniors. They are going to be the team to beat next year. Um, they had Lexington Catholic's number. Um, Lexington had, Catholic had trouble guarding uh, their three-point shooters, which turns out was a big problem for them guarding Madison Central and their three-point shooters. You know, that was a, you know, a little harbinger of doom for, for Lexington <laughs> Catholic. When they lost that district uh, title game, they had to go to Madison Central. And you do not want to go uh, to play Coach Allen Feldhouse's team on Allen Feldhouse Jr. Court. That is not <laughs> a thing you need to be doing as a basketball team, uh, because they tend to win there. Uh, and if it's a, the bigger the spot is, the more you're in trouble usually. Uh, Tate's Creek got them last year, but it took everything Tate's Creek had to beat them on that court. Um, and, uh, you know, I would say it was kind of a, you know, it was a coin flip game between Douglas and Dunbar to see who would yeah. face Madison Central in that final. And that came down to like the, about the last possession. Um, you know, Douglas is, was a really good team this year. They were number seven in the state by the media rankings. Dunbar uh, would have been in the rankings had they not, you know, taken a couple of losses early. That kind of diminished uh, everybody's opinion of them uh, statewide. Everybody uh, but, but me. Man. Hold on. I just got to yeah. put that out there. Everybody uh, but me. That's hard for us. But, you know, I mean, Nick Spalding played out of his mind against Lexington Catholic in both games against them and really was playing well. Him and Tim Hall. You know, they have an inside-out thing, and they have enough, you know, Max Van Dyke can shoot. And, you know, this – I can't – Zach Carter was shoot, making shots. So, you know, the 11th region was not a down region. I mean, it wasn't Lexington Catholic and everybody else. It's really tough to get out of the 11th region, and rightfully so. To follow up on that, uh, you know, Truck posted on the, the 316 on our, our group page the other day. People like, no Lexington teams – on little one little team, but as you said, the eleventh region and the tip region are uh, eleventh region is a tough region to get out of. And the thing about it, we beat up on each other. So what do you say about that? With people like oh, I ain't no Lexington schools, it, the basketball is improving. Do you believe it is? Uh yeah. I mean, I, there's no question that Lexington basketball is is at at a different level than most areas of the state. Now, you know, because of the way, and it's this way in almost every sport. It's like we have to decide the 11th region champion and only one of these teams get out. But if we were doing a, you know, a statewide 64 bracket, I mean, <laughs> we would have, you know, seven or eight teams uh, able to, to play in a, a state tournament that way. But they don't do it that way, and they never have done it that way. You know, the, you know, you have three top teams in Louisville, and only one of them gets through, and you have three top teams out of Lexington in the central Kentucky area and only one team gets through. That's just the way Kentucky high school basketball is. Sometimes I wish it weren't that way, 
But do I think that Dunbar, Douglas, Lexington Catholic could advance one or two or three or rounds or make a state championship game against the competition in the state? If it were a wider field to start and they didn't have to knock each other off in the first round like the silly way they do it, absolutely. Now, looking if this at were this... an NCAA tournament style, we would have a few, a couple of Lexington teams in the Elite Eight. <laughs> now, now, looking at the way the tournament grew out this year, would you say the bracket is more top heavy? I think that the Magic balls, the lottery balls that were rolled out made a very tough Wednesday bracket. Uh, Elizabethtown is up there. Bowling Green is up there. Uh, and then you've got uh, Madison Central and, and Ballard, number one up there. Ballard, uh, you know, they drew the 11th region to start, and then they're going to have to go through Bowling Green and possibly Elizabethtown to get to a final. Uh, I would think, you know, that's a really top-heavy day. Uh, a lot of the top teams there. Now, anything can happen. These are high school kids. You know, everybody's going to put everything they've got out there. So do I think, you know, it's not a given that the top teams are going to win the state tournament. It never is. Uh, but, you know, it's easier for everybody else, for everybody else to win if you pit <laughs> some of the top teams against each other and Madison Southern or Madison Central and Ballard being against each other early. And Elizabethtown and possibly Ballard Madison Central being facing each other in a quarter uh, makes it easier on everybody else. The other side of the bracket on Thursday, you know, the best game, the best game of that day and the best matchup on that side happens right off the bat, too, with Ashland and Knox Central. Those are the two, probably the two highest rated teams on that side of the bracket, and they face each other on the first round. And I think if Ashland wins on Thursday, Either of those teams that wins on Thursday could probably go pretty far. You know, I've picked Ashland uh, in my picks, I think, are online now and probably in the paper today or tomorrow. I put Ashland as the state title winner. But who knows what's going to happen. I was wrong most of the time on my region picks. So <laughs> I only picked seven region champs. So what do I know? <laughs> you talk about Knox Central, and then we have Madison Central. Knox Central won the region last year. But everybody kind of penciled in North Laurel. Are there any other su surprise teams, you know, as far as getting there? Well, I don't think that Paintsville was exactly a favorite, probably. Um, I think Johnson Central was a favorite there, and they got them at the end. I mean, Johnson Central beat them a couple of times during the season. Um, I would say, you know, people would look at uh, – People who don't know Western Kentucky basketball, and I count myself among those, would have thought maybe Marshall County would have a chance against McCracken, but that didn't turn out to be the case at all. So McCracken is right back here, and it is, that's not really a surprise since they were back here last year, but they lost a Division One player off of that team last year, and I don't know that they replaced those points very much, um, but uh, you know they're back with Noah Dumas, who was co-region player of the year against Zion Harmon in, in Marshall County. Uh, Muhlenberg would have to be a surprise, uh, and they played a light schedule. Like eight, they're eighteen and one, but they've only lost one game. Uh, they only played mostly third region competition. I think I didn't see them step too out far of their comfort zone. But you know, we don't really think of Muhlenberg County as being in the Sweet Sixteen. But you know, great for them. It's great to be here. Uh, I, I think they have a pretty tough game. I, I can't remember exactly the matchup right now because I don't have the list in front of me. But I would say Madison Central is a huge surprise. But if you shoot 70% from three-point range and 70% from the field against Lexington Catholic, when they have a 6'11 dude and a 6'8 dude and a 6'6 dude, and you just shoot them out of the gym and win 101 to 97, yeah. that'll win you some ball games. And I predict if Madison Central continues to shoot 70% <laughs> from the field, they will yeah. win the state title. <laughs> but the, but they only shot 56% against Douglas, and they barely won that game. But that was a lot of fun. Yeah, Jerry, that's a bold prediction. Said that you said he said they're going to win. That's a, that's way to go on a little bit. It's like a coach truck pick, Jerry. It's like a coach truck pick. Hold <laughs> oh, no. on. Man, every year we used to have that kid that stands out out of nowhere that has a great run. From the kids you see, the teams you see in this tournament and the kids you see there, any kid you think may pop out and have one of those runs this year? 
Well, it's going to be interesting to see uh, DeCase Franklin. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing his, his name correctly out of Elizabethtown. I think he, he's set up for uh, state, uh, you know, could make a run. Uh, Gabe Sisk from uh, Ballard, you know, averages 18, 20 points a game. I mean, what you look for in these games is for the, your star player to be a star in the Sweet 16. Um, uh, that's, you know, sometimes your star player is a star and then, you know, they just let that guy go and they stop everybody else. Uh, it's the guys that who can also, you know, draw attention and the other players step up and, and go with them. Uh, you know, there are six Mr. Basketball candidates in the Sweet 16 this year. Um, so, you know, Noah Dumas out of McCracken, uh, Nash Devine out of Muhlenberg. Um, I'm, I'm going to blank out on some others, but, you know, Cole Brown's a really nice player uh, for Madison Central. And, you know, you know if, it, they, if, if they didn't scuffle a little bit early, you know, he might have been in the region player of the year conversation. But, yeah, there's no question the Sweet 16 is a, a showcase uh, for kids and, and can get kids scholarships. You know, we see that with Jake Omer for Scott a few years ago. He lit up the world in the Sweet 16. It just went completely bananas and got a Western Kentucky offer out of it. Outside of Ashland, does he have another favorite? In, uh, Madison Central, baby, Madison Central, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I like Madison Central. I like that game. That game is going to be the best game of the day, yeah, I yeah. hope. I hope it is. I hope that they've still got some magic and, you know, wear their socks, you know, however they've been wearing them and put their shoes on. Uh, cause you know, the people, the thing about Ballard is people think that Ballard is the overdog here and they are, and, you know, respect to them. They should be, they're a great team. Uh, they've only been beaten twice. Uh, one was, you know, kind of a last minute deal in the Louisville Invitational Tournament by DeSales. Um, you, you, we talked about the, you know, Cinderella stories. How about Bullet East out of the six? Who picked Bullet East out of the sixth yeah. region? Nobody, nobody picked Bullet East out of the sixth region. They were picked fifth by the coaches preseason to finish fifth in the sixth region. And then they wake up and they beat Jefferson Town. They beat DeSales uh, in the, the tournament and, and go on and, and make it there. So they're a great story. I think they got four players who average double figures. I don't think any of them average over 13, but they all get it done. Well, Highlands beat St. Henry. St. Henry beat Covenant Catholic and took care of Covenant Catholic for them. And then Highlands turned around and uh, beat St. Henry. St. Henry was the All-A Classic champion this year and last year back-to-back and had Wyatt Beat, who is a phenomenal player. And then Highlands – I saw Highlands play Lexington Catholic and Sam Vincent was player of the year for the ninth region, but they didn't look all that great against Lexington Catholic. But that was a month and a half ago. And Lexington Catholic handled them pretty easily. But, but then, you know, if you come through the ninth region – where that has Highlands and, and or I mean, excuse me, has Covenant Catholic and has St. Henry, you've done something and you are someone to be reckoned with. And James Weber of the Kentucky Inquirer said that they've really come on at the end of the season. They have the longest winning streak coming in here. I think they've won 17 straight games in the ninth region, which like the 11th region is no joke. And he said their younger players have really come on and supported, uh, offered an alternative to Sam Vinson, and they're just rolling. So they're a very dangerous team coming to the Sweet 16 as well. And they're on Ashland's side of the bracket. So, uh, you know, that could be an Ashland uh, Highland semifinal there. Uh, and that would be fun. <laughs> I know this is the first time since 2017 that there's been no Catholic school, you know, no church school in the tournament. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, it's uh, – I don't know what private – is there a private school? I think the only private school is, uh, I think, UHA. Are they private? University That's Heights? right. Yeah, University Heights. That's correct. That's right. Yeah, and, you know, people would complain every year about the private schools having such a big advantage and, you know, Louisville Trinity and and all that. But people don't think about, you know, St. Mary and Paducah is out there. Has anybody ever heard of St. Mary? No. You know, Covenant Catholic is there every year and, and does things. But St. Henry's also there. And they're not here at the state tournament. Coming to the state tournament, you know, it just 
Just get it, roll the ball out and play. Come on. Oh, man, seemed like we had everything lined up for a great tournament win starting off Wednesday. We know our man Jared Peck at Harold Lita Preps is going to be in the house all day, every day. Hey, Jared, we appreciate what you do, man. You worked hard during this basketball season. Uh, before we get you going, man, you got any idea on this Mr. Basketball? Mr. Basketball. Well, if it's not Ben Johnson or Zion Harmon, I don't know who it would be. I mean, there are a lot of good players across the state. And when it comes to this thing, sometimes regionalization um, plays a factor in it. I mean, nobody's committed to Kentucky. So we don't really have that player that, that stands out. That made a difference, you know, a couple of years ago. Um, you know, there's no real – you know, Ben Johnson is going to Bellarmine. Zion is going to Western. You know, last year's Mr. Basketball went to Western. You just you just don't know how the voting blocks are going to find out because all the coaches vote, or most of the coaches vote, and then some media folk, you know, select media folk, a, a lot of media votes on it. Um, but they don't release how it breaks down. And, you know, sometimes it feel, figures to be, you know, it feels like a region holds sway over another. I don't know how that works. For Zion, he's held back by the transfers, mm -hmm. you know, playing for three different schools and then sitting out a year. If he hadn't had to sit out a year because the KHSA told him that transfer seemed hinky to them, uh, he would be no doubt the Mr. Basketball for this year. But sitting out his junior year, uh, hurt his stats, even though he owns a ton of high school records, he's in the record book all over the place. Uh, ben Johnson has a phenomenal career, 2,000 points, going to Bellarmine. Um, but he goes to a private school, and he's from Lexington, and Le Lexington doesn't really help you sometimes. Um, so who do I think should get it? I think Ben Johnson has done – his team was phenomenal this year all the way to the end, and he had done enough to earn Mr. Basketball respect. Who do I know think will win it? I have no idea. No, 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 man. Thank you for always, man. Jerry, you've been a big, uh, big supporter of the program, man, and – a lot of this is because of you. We appreciate it, man. You and, and, and I mean, we really appreciate you guys, it. Guys, I, I love you guys. You, you're great. Uh, you're great to have around. You're great to – it's great for you to be a part of, of high school sports. It's awesome. Appreciate it, Jared. Thank you, man. Well, thank you, man. Thank you, guys. All, All right. right. Yep. Hey, man, the one thing that's interesting is the fact that there are no Catholic schools and only one private school in the field this year. So that's interesting. You know, a lot of people talk about the disparities in the tournament. But, Coach, man, if my Indians can get past this Ballard's game, let's go Indians, baby. I'm riding with Coach Feldhouse. I ain't glad. Winner of that, that game there, as Jared mentioned it briefly in our interview, is probably going to be the winner, the winner of the Sweet 16. So, Coach. That top bracket is heavy, though. It's that it's GRC, too. They would have to play in the quarters. So Yes, sir. It's heavy Chevy. Coach, I think I'm also going to wrap with Masters Church on this and Coach Feldhouse, Jr., Coach. All right. All right. Well, look forward to a great Sweet 16, as always. You know, like Jerry said, he gave you a bunch of names and stuff to look forward to, man. I look forward to this to being a great event from KHSA. Absolutely. And make sure you tune in tomorrow for our regular show. We have baseball coach Eddie Brooks on from, from Frederick Douglass High School. We have Lafayette softball coach on, Coach Dan Grant. So make sure you stay tuned tomorrow and watch that show. Watch that show. Yes, sir. So have a good time and enjoy Sweet 16. Coach Bu, go ahead and send us out. Man, as always, just be a living donor. I'm Coach Bu, my main man, Coach T, be on the side of the Coach Truck. Hey. Bye.